We are talking law, and this is Radio 97. If you have a question for Despina, as uh, quite a few people have over the last few weeks, uh, all you need to do to uh, get that question uh, to us and then to Despina is to go to the website radio97.com.au. You'll find a couple of ways you can get in contact with us there. Just uh, head to your nearest computer or your phone, radio97.com.au. Thank you, Wayno. Alrighty, uh, I love this one because I think I'm hoping... Maybe not hoping, that sounds mean, but I'm hoping people can relate to this because Desi Offair just went through a few parking fines um, and legislation that's in place, so you can get done for this. Uh, just around the, it could be around the Gold Coast maybe, and immediately I related to some of these fines that I could. I definitely could have gotten, um, but I haven't just yet. So we're going to shed some light on these laws to do with parking, um, some things you might uh, not be aware of. Despina, yeah. this is interesting. Help us save some money here in parking fines, Despina. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think anybody uh, loves receiving a parking fine or an infringement penalty notice as they're formally, you know, mm. known, but uh, I don't think anybody enjoys that. And in saying that, obviously, you shouldn't be doing the wrong thing when you know it's the wrong thing. But when I came across the Queensland government website recently, I had cause to do that. And I saw the whole list of common parking fines. Uh, there were four pages of it. And right. I thought, I wonder if people know, and it's under the heading common parking fines, I don't I common. If people know <laughs> what is included in this very long list. So I thought I'd mention maybe a couple of the obvious, but maybe some of the ones that are not so obvious and maybe are not known. So then you know not to break the law uh, that you didn't know existed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a few there where I thought, my goodness, I see this at least maybe once a day if you park at the beach for on a Sunday. Like you just see it so often. So you, you um, do. And why give away your money um, to you know mm. local council and government when you don't have to? So, and exactly. the fines can be hefty. So common parking fines. So I'm not going to read out all and sundry, right? And if you want to read it yourself, you can go to Queensland Government website yourself and just Google parking rules and fines for Queensland. Uh, but I'll mention some, a couple of obvious and maybe not so obvious. So you know where people, you see people dropping off passengers and picking up passengers and maybe an area that's a no parking zone. Uh, so obviously you're not supposed to park or stop where there is a no parking sign unless right? You're dropping off or picking up passengers, delivering or collecting goods. And, and you obviously can't leave your vehicle unattended. That's an actual um, law you can't break. But it says here in a little box, in these instances, you can stop for a maximum of two minutes, unless the sign says otherwise. So it's always about read the sign first. Yeah, like always. Reading the fine print on a contract. So yeah. read, the, read what's on the sign first, right? Uh, and make sure you actually, I sometimes take a photo so I do that as an yeah. argy bargy later on. That's Always. a good Wednesday. idea. Yeah, that's a good photo. <laughs> you not do that, Wayne? No. Oh, I'm gonna do that from now. On. I always take a Absolutely. photo. Absolutely. There's no argy bargy about. Oh, well, let's go to the street on on what this sign says. So yeah. who wants to yeah. go back right there? Good yeah, idea. Yep. You probably can't even remember where it was. So just take a photo of the sign. So you can stop for two minutes unless the sign says otherwise. Uh, but if you have dropping or picking up passengers with a disability, that time's extended to five minutes. So that's just, you know, dropping and picking off. It happens a lot. Um, but there are a couple of others that were interesting. Everybody knows about not parking on a continuous yellow line, I hope, because that's obviously not allowed. Um, but look, parking or stopping within 10 metres of any intersection where there are no traffic lights, right? Unless you're in a T intersection and you're parking along the continuous side of the continuing road. Oh, Very goodness. Confusing. Oh, um, my goodness. I yeah. know, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you better to have pictures, which we'll come back <laughs> to in a minute. Um, yeah. Parking or stopping on a children's crossing, right? So you can't do that. Obviously. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. But all within 20 metres. 20 metres. Before oh. or 10 metres after a children's crossing. So 20 10 minutes before, before 10, 10 after. after. So I didn't know that myself. So there you go. Um, so parking or stopping on a bicycle crossing, right? So you can't actually do that on the bicycle mm -hmm. crossing because it's for cyclists or within 10 metres before bicycle crossing or within three metres after the bicycle crossing. What? Mm. That's dumb. What? <laughs> 10 meters, sorry, but 10 metres before, three metres after. Or within three metres after. So, yeah. 
How would anyone possibly know that? Oh, you're supposed to gauge all this, aren't you? you when read the own. four pages on the government website. <laughs> okay, there you go. Ten meters before, four meters after. Three eight, meters. Three meters. Sorry. See, I got it wrong straight away. <laughs> on a near a cycle. Cycle. That's right. Yeah. Um. Exactly. So another one. We all know that you're not supposed to stop on freeway. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. pretty obvious. Don't mm-hmm. stop on a freeway. Yeah. Spoken about really this. Yeah. You yeah. can stop in an emergency lane. So everyone should know about that. But you're actually not allowed to park or stop in an emergency lane unless it is for no, your just... safety or the safety of your passengers. Now that's pretty broad. So that could mean a whole range of things. For example. You know, someone's about to black out as a driver or you've got maybe a screaming child that might be for your safety. Could mm-hmm. be someone about to throw up or maybe other, you know, Go to the bathroom. needs the rise. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> or, or who knows what the situation is. But obviously stopping and pulling over to eat or have a Take drink, a phone call. Maybe take a phone call. No, mm-hmm. that would probably not be considered an emergency. Yep. Um, so look, things like, which would be obvious, you can't park or stop in a taxi zone, bus zone, permit zone, mail zone. A mail zone is the Australia Post mail zone, mm-hmm. right, right. where there's an Australia Post sign, double parking. We all know that, right? Um, but maybe some other ones, for example, um, failing to leave one metre of space in front of and behind your vehicle when you parallel park. Ooh, that yes. one is my yeah. favorite because you drive through surface on a sunny day or cool and or anywhere brunswick heads you will see these cars nice and tight parallel just getting in there um but it has to be a meter on either side of the vehicle apparently so wow apparently so and and i can tell you that in europe Definitely not. You go no, anywhere like in no. Italy and Rome, they actually, the, all the vehicles are small. They actually, when they parallel park, they actually bump the car in front and they bump the car behind <laughs> and just tap it a little bit to actually nudge in and fit. I mean, all the cars are jam packed. I've seen videos on YouTube where they actually, yes, you can see that actually pushing the car in front, like oh. physically touching and pushing that car in front. It's, exactly. And that's yeah. Europe, but it's not yeah. Australia. You know, no, luckily we don't do that here. In oh. saying that though, guys, like when you do go to the beach or something and you see those parallel parks and you see obviously the little white lines, it, it doesn't seem like there's a meter. Like picturing it now, it doesn't seem like there's a whole meter. If you have quite a big sedan or a ute or something i can't see how naturally there would be a meter even with those lines marked on the road by council yeah now that i think about it so yeah fight it take a photo of things just in case (laughs) oh and and there's a couple more i want to mention but just on that note when when you go and pay for your parking right so these days you can actually do it through your phone so you put the rego in and you you put the rego in on the sign but it's all computerized well I don't really trust that it's going to work accurately. So I actually, when I go through and pay for the parking, I actually take a photo of, of, the <laughs> yeah, of where it says I'm paid to, you know, this time because, mm. you know, they says, oh, do you want your receipt emailed? And then you've got to put it in you know, your phone and your email address. And that's all a big hassle. I just take, you know, a, uh, a photo just in case someone says I didn't pay for parking. Just very quickly, have you ever needed any of those photos that you've taken? Yes, I have. <laughs> have you? I actually, I actually argued the point in uh, Broad Beach. So where all the restaurants are, you can only park at certain times near all the restaurants. And I actually, this is a true story. I actually put apparently my rego in wrong where I put an O instead of the number zero. So well, they, didn't, that? they didn't pick up the rego. And I said, oh. but I actually was there and I actually did pay for parking. And here's my receipt. I actually argued the point and got out of it because I did do the right thing. I just yeah. happened to put a, a, yeah. a zero instead of a, or whatever I did, a no instead of a zero or vice yeah. versa. Uh, Cause I've got a couple of O's and zeros in my rego uh, without telling people what my rego is. And yeah. Um, they, I actually got out of it, but council did say to me, well, you only get one chance to get one chance. That's it. So next time put your right rego in, right? So that was human error. Yeah, exactly. Um, another one here, leaving the keys in your vehicle or leaving the motor running and walking away, for example, in a shop. So, you know, you go to the convenience store quickly, I'm out of bread or I'm out of milk. You're running, you, you leave the car going. Then you're not supposed to do that. And if you do leave the keys in the car with the motor switched off, you've got to have someone 16 years or older in the car. Mm. Yeah, so that's actually breaking the law if you don't do that, which was interesting. You have the older boy that's 15 and the little siblings in the back. Hang on, mum's going to get this. 
you can't, you're not allowed. Yeah, so exactly. I mean, look, it's probably irresponsible to do that anyway, but yeah, sometimes it's a safety, people, it's a safety. Yeah, but you safety. see it's it. It's a safety, it's a safety I've, issue, plus you don't want your car yeah. stolen and all this sort of business. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And your kids stolen, you don't want your kids stolen either. <laughs> Exactly. It comes, comes before the car. Comes before the car. That's true. Yeah. Comes with the car. Oh, I the car. So yeah. I thought that was interesting. People want to have a look at that and uh, contrast it with New South Wales. What I found interesting, and I had a quick web look on their website for New South Wales. I think New South Wales is ahead of Queensland in this way, in that what they've done is because it's very convoluted in all the wording. Uh, so what New South Wales do on their website is they actually put pictures up, so nice big illustrations of what do we mean by this statement. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, and I think for people who, you know, language is, English is their second language, not their first, to try and understand what all this means, um, it's better to see it in pictures. So I thought that was pretty good. Maybe Queensland can take a leaf out of New South Wales book in that mm -hmm. respect. For sure. And maybe condense it down from four pages to two or something. <laughs> exactly. um, avoid the heavy reading. Uh, that website there, www.qld.gov.au forward slash transport. Thank you so much, Despina, for coming on the show once again for Talking Law. And if anyone does want to get in touch with you directly, where can they go? So the number again, double five two nine one two nine four. Email info at .com today. You All of these segments, by the way, are up on the YouTube channel. So if you've missed part of the segment, you can jump on my YouTube channel and have a look. Yeah, all right, and we'll do it all again next week. See you then, guys. Yeah. Are you confused about legal jargon? Do you need legal advice but don't know where to turn? Tune in to Talking Law with Despina Priala every Thursday morning at 8.30 on Radio 97. Despina, a leading lawyer with over 20 years of experience, will demystify the law and provide practical advice to help you navigate legal issues. Whether it's a family matter, a property dispute, or a business concern, Talking Law has got you covered. Don't miss out on this valuable resource. Tune in to Talking Law with Despina Priala every Thursday morning at 8.30 on Radio 97.